Today on Nerd Out, How to Kill Cardano. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano and we break it down, but we don't dumb it down. Today we're talking about How to Kill Cardano, which is kind of a fun, interesting topic. So let's get into it. So first of all, how, if you were an attacker, how, what would be a way to shut Cardano down? Um, the first one that came to my mind was if the internet goes down. So Cardano is built on top of the internet. So if we have some solar flare or enough of the undersea cables are cut, you know, there, there is a way to take down Cardano just if the internet itself goes down. Also on Cardano, we currently have a parameter on the network called D. And this was used during the early days of Shelly to slowly hand over control of the network from the IOG nodes to the stakeable operator nodes. And the D parameter was slowly changed from one all the way down to zero. And at that point, the network was uh, fully decentralized for block production. But there's nothing that stops this number from going back up to one and IOG taking control over again and shutting down everything if they wanted to. Um, however, this is only an option for them to do until the Vassal hard fork. At the Vassal hard fork, the D parameter goes away. It's been removed from the code. So this is no longer an option to take back control of the block production. Um, there is the ability for bad actors inside IOG to change some other parameter that makes the network unusable. For example, they could do something like change the max block body size to zero. It's currently 90 kilobytes. Well, if they set it to zero, then it's impossible to make a block because you can't make a block with size zero. Uh, max transaction size, same kind of thing. They could also attack the network by making fees super high. So if you said the fee to put a transaction on the network is some massive number that's more than anybody has in any, any wallet, that effectively shuts it down because all blocks would then be empty. Uh, another way for the network to shut down is if all the stake pool operators would shut down their nodes and they could be incentivized to do this if some other parameter like the treasury cut started taking 100% of the rewards instead of giving those to the pool operators and all of the stakers. So currently this number is 20%. Uh, the, the Cardano is, is taxed at 20%. Now there's some discussion as to whether that's too low, too high, um, but that's that's a discussion for another video. Currently it's 20% off the top goes to the Cardano treasury, and then everything else goes to stake pool operators and their delegates. Uh, there could also be a partial shutdown of smart contracts by changing certain smart contract parameters. So the, the main question we have to talk about, it is possible, yes, today to shut down Cardano, but how feasible are these options? And that's, that's really the very important question. So solar flare or cutting undersea cable to me seems more likely that I'm currently comfortable with. I don't know that the internet is as resilient as it could be. Um, other technologies I think are coming in the future with uh, satellites and other stuff that could help with this but yeah if there's a massive solar flare from the sun there's there's not a whole lot we can do our electronics are going to get fried um, hopefully we have enough warning about that but i think it's something like seven or eight minutes is all the warning we get so probably not enough to uh, shut down anything that needs to be shut down to protect it from that solar flare uh, the other attack I've discussed is parameter change attacks. So currently, governance on Cardano is not decentralized. Um, it, it was quasi-decentralized at the beginning. Charles talked about this a little bit in his latest video. Um, but currently, IOG holds all the keys. Previously, it was Emergo and the Foundation held some of the Genesis keys that are allowed to change network parameters, but... Currently, IOG holds all seven keys. You have to have parameter updates signed by at least five of the seven to do that. Um, but when we're talking about feasibility of this, 
Charles has zero incentive to nuke his life's work in the Cardano network. Um, it, it's kind of silly to talk about because, you know, IOG wants to make money off of Cardano doing commercial things in the future. He wants to bank the unbanked in Africa. You know, the, the incentive to do this is, is just not there. Um, there is a non-zero risk of rogue employees doing something. However, I have met a lot of these uh, DevOps on their teams. And they're highly trustworthy people. And they also have likely, I don't know for sure because I'm not on the inside, but they likely have systems and key management processes in place to make it very hard to update parameters um, in, in a manner that would be unreversible. Um, another downside to this parameter change attack is it is currently one company that if a government wanted to go after Cardano, they could by squeezing IOG right now. So the way to eliminate that is to decentralize the governance and, and how these parameter updates and, key, and keys are managed. Uh, there's also SPO attacks. So um, we talked about SPOs being able to shut down their nodes. Um, decentralization of the stake helps prevent this. So staking with um, a lot of different pool operators is a way you can help pre prevent this. Um, keeping money on exchanges is a very bad idea for this reason. So if more and more stake goes to exchange pools, that means exchange pools make a higher percentage of the blocks. Um, currently, it's it's a few percentage points of overall Cardano, so it it's not catastrophic what's going on today, but it could be better. So just as an example, yesterday all the Coinbase pools, there's tons of pools out there that Coinbase runs behind the scenes. They're staking people's ADA that they don't even know is being staked. Coinbase is just soaking up all the money from that. Um, they stopped producing blocks. We believe, based on the date and the timing of it, that they forgot to do routine maintenance, which is rotating their their KES keys. Um, but again, get your ADA off the exchanges. They don't know what they're doing. Stake with pool operators that have proven that they know what they're doing, have a long track record. Um, you know, look at their websites, dig into what they're doing in the in the ecosystem. Stake with good, reliable pool operators that. A, know what they're doing, and then B, if they have, you know, some cause you support. There, there's a number of reasons to find a, a good pool, but we won't go into that in this video. But community pool operators are the way to go there. So how do we improve Cardano resilience? Uh, first and foremost in my mind is decentralization of governance. Now governance, from the very beginning, Charles and the IOG team have said governance is one of the hardest pillars that they need to tackle on Cardano. It's, it's um, you know, the Voltaire era is, is hard. It's one of the later stages. Um, and they put systems in place that were good enough for the period of time we were in. And as Charles said in his video, um, I'll link it below for you. I, I recommend watching this video. Mistakes have been made, you know, the, the original era of the Cardano Foundation was not the best structure. It wasn't managed in the best way. Um, and so some of those keys were brought back into, into IOG. Um, same with the Emergo keys. They were, they were brought back into IOG as well. So decentralizing governance should be a priority going forward. And it looks like there is at least a proposal on the table to turn Cardano into more of a um, system that's managed closer to what something like Linux is managed, which is which is a good thing. So we'll have we're already seeing a lot of that with decentralization of decisions for what's going in the releases. We saw this this latest um, BAS release is mostly community contributions through the SIP process, and so hopefully that continues to go forward, and hopefully we have more and more people who are just plain working for Cardano and not necessarily working for a company doing work inside of Cardano. The other thing we can do to improve resilience is decentralization of stake. 
the more groups we have making the blocks, the better. However, I want to couch that with too much decentralization is also bad for performance. So the K parameter determines the ideal number of stake pools on Cardano. That's currently sitting at uh, 500, I believe. And we have around three, two to 3,000 pools on Cardano. I'm not sure exactly how many are making blocks every epoch, but it's, it's a good number more than 500. So decentralization is good. Spreading that block production out is good. Spreading it out too far is actually bad. So when you spread it too far, then block propagation time suffers. So it's harder for a block to get from one block producer to the next block producer if there's too many block producers making the blocks. Um, also, there's a financial aspect to that. So if you say, you know, let's say we blasted K up to 10,000 tomorrow, and then it makes it very hard for a stake pool operator to make enough to feed their family and stuff like that. So there's there's finan there's a financial sweet spot and there's a network sweet spot for where some of these parameters should be. Um, so it's when we talk about decentralization, high decentralization is good, but more is not always better. So that's something to keep in mind. There's a sweet spot to be found there. Um, another way to improve Cardano resilience which is actually going down right now, which is the value price of ADA. Um, the higher the price of ADA is, the more financial stability pool operators have. Um, currently, I'm, I'm not aware of any pool operators that are able to go full time operating just a single pool. It just, the price of ADA doesn't support it right now. There's not enough financial money to be made to where it can actually do more than just support the cost of the hardware to run. So we, we need the value of ADA to rise in order for Cardano resilience to be there. Um, anytime the, the price of ADA goes up, that makes the network that much harder to attack and makes all kinds of attacks more expensive. Um, so just like Bitcoin hash power goes down when electricity gets expensive or the price of Bitcoin goes down, you know, people turn off their mining equipment. Cardano stake pool operators have to weigh similar, similar financial equations. So the lower and lower the, the cost or the price of ADA goes and the more percentage of their rewards they're spending on hardware to run the system, they have more incentive to turn that off. Um, however, it is a little different than Bitcoin because Bitcoin mining, they can just shut it off and they haven't lost any of their hash power. They've just turned it off. Uh, whereas Cardano stake pool operators, if they turn off their stake pools, they lose some of their credibility with the community. So the minute they turn off, you know, Cardano's proof of stake. So they lose their credibility in the ecosystem, which if they then turn their known back on later, they have lost a lot of their credibility and the, the delegators have likely moved elsewhere and likely will not come back to them. So they are more incentivized than Bitcoin miners to keep things running even in a bear market, which is, which is an interesting principle of Cardano or a property of Cardano. So summary, are we there yet? Are we where we need to be? No. Um, but if you watch Charles's latest video, I, I highly recommend checking it out. Um, he talks a lot about where he sees the vision for decentralized governance going. Now, this is just Charles's vision. Again, there's going to be a whole lot more people and stakeholders and everything that's going to get a say in how this eventually is set up. We're really moving from the point where... IOG is making all, all the decisions to the community actually gets a say in things. Um, so like it or not, some parts of science require trial and error to arrive at an optimal solution. So we're not there yet. We're probably what he presents in his video is an ideal scenario. It's probably not going to hit the mark, but we can iterate on that solution and arrive um, at an optimal solution over time. So another thing I wanted to point out, uh, Mateus K2RZ has proposed a new SIP 
for kind of an interim phase for decentralized governance. Um, again, this also isn't perfect, but check this SIP out. I'll try to link it in the description as well. It's a, a good first step and a good place to have discussion on the idea of decentralized governance. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of this. You can read the, read the SIP if you're interested in that. But So in summary, Cardano is really resilient. Improvements could be made and will be made over time. So that's what I got for you today. And with that, nerd out. Thank <laughs> you.